Hey folks, welcome to episode 116 of the Ocean Sailing Podcast. This week, John Bilger, founder and CEO of Predict Wind, joins me to share an update on all of the recent changes and innovations uh, that uh, have happened at Predict Wind. And uh, I can personally say that Predict Wind is my eyes and ears when it comes to weather routing and, and uh, forecasting at sea. I've been an avid user now for almost a decade and I'm, you know, impressed by the constant innovation and new features added to the PredictWin suite of tools. Um, their support second to none if you need help, um, whether it's online or live person by telephone. And, and interestingly, the people I talk to on their support team, are, they've come from sailing backgrounds, so they understand what you need and what you're trying to achieve, and they're really helpful, um, sometimes even on a Friday night or a Saturday morning. So one of the big changes in the last 12 months has been uh, the Iridium Go Exec, uh, upgrade um, as an add-on to predict wind uh, along with Starlink and, and basically the, the race is on between both of those providers and, and others um, to provide global internet coverage via satellites at uh, much higher speeds and uh, much much lower rates than we've historically seen, particularly if you're going you know a long way offshore and you're not just coastal and whether you're a, a cruising sailor or a racing sailor, it's really, really helpful. So you know, by way of example, I've seen weather downloads when we're crossing the Tasman of about 1.3, 1.4 megabytes, uh, take 90 minutes to download with the old Iridium Go um, system. Uh, with Starlink, I'm now doing that in less than 60 seconds. So Starlink's been a real game changer for us. We've had Starlink on board um, our three yachts since uh, July last year and um, you know, maintaining contact while at sea and managing your life for sure. Um, is great and you know a lot of people shun the idea of internet access while sailing and the whole concept of going off the grid but from safety to organizing parts and, and contractors for repairs to communicating with people ashore to you know simple things like bill payments and uh, in our case uploading images to social media and, and to blog posts um, all of that's easier um, if you've got internet ex access and you can decide when to turn it on and turn it off um, but I, I think it's never been easier to get off the grid and go to sea thanks to uh, innovations like Starlink, which have just you know opening the world up um, very, very quickly from, uh, from a coverage point of view. And of course, if you want to watch the video interview with John, uh, we have that available for you through the Ocean Sailing Podcast Facebook group. So if you just go to Facebook and search Ocean Sailing Podcast, join that group, any of the interviews we do um, by video as well um, we publish those in the ocean sailing podcast group so you can watch those uh, and enjoy those as well so thanks folks for joining the ocean sailing podcast this week and enjoy this uh, episode with john bilger uh, founder and ceo of predict wind hey john uh how are you doing welcome along to the ocean sailing podcast and thank you for joining me uh this week for uh, an episode on the podcast talking about um, predict wind Fantastic. Well, thanks for thanks for having us on. Really appreciate it. So, um, it's um, it's great to that you put aside the time. And uh, you know, my background is I've I've been a long term user of Predict Wind, and um, for I'm not sure now, but may, maybe seven or eight years. I, I I don't know. It goes back quite a way. But my background was historically, you know, sort of crossing oceans and paying for a weather router, um, to to tell me what to do each day and where to go next and where to head for. And I did that for the first few years and then Predict Wind came along and, and um, well, in terms of my awareness of Predict Wind and uh, I started using it side by side with the weather routers information for a couple of years and a, a few crossings and, and realized that the, the data was sort of, and the information was was equal and then superior really in terms of what it gave me and, and the controller gave me. And, and, you know, we now, with our, our business, we now sail, you know, more than 20,000 miles a year with each vessel and do multiple ocean crossings and we literally couldn't do it we couldn't do those without predict wind and we and we wouldn't just head off into the wild blue yonder and hope for the best um so your your software and your tools are at, you know our eyes and ears and and forward looking sort of ability weather wise at sea so uh it's a it's great to sort of talk with you today and and really i'm, I'm keen to understand you know how did the how did predict wind start and what, what led to the creation of predict wind and, and you know you've come a hell of a long way um, so I'm just keen to understand that sort of history and 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 then the, you know and the scale of the business today as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. That's really heartwarming to hear that sort of feedback because that's that's why we do what we do. We're 
bunch of very passionate sailors here in Pritigwin. Uh, you've got people here that done multiple involved ocean races and you know obviously sailing at a high level. So um, yeah, it's really cool to hear that the, that uh, the technologies work well for you. So yeah, my, my background is, you know, I mean, started off sailing dinghies, um, windsurfing, you know, I'm into kite falling and all sorts. Um, but uh, I did a 10-year stint with the America's Cup. I uh, worked for the um, for the Swiss America's Cup team for 10 years, and my job was running their weather program. So I kind of had this, um, you know, given the task of, you know, telling the boat which way to go, and we had amazing access to some amazing technology. You know, we had this, um, uh, we basically looked, sourced the world for the best weather modeling technology. Um, we came across uh, CSRO in Australia um, and th that we used, actually used their technology. And it, it turned out to be so, so good that, that the team members, you know, because you know, bear in mind the first America's Cup was 2003 and we've got, you know, like some. Brad Butterworth and Russell Coots and Murray Jones and all the living legends in New Zealand. And in the end, they end up trusting the model more than their own, you know, historical knowledge. You know, because everyone's a weather expert, right? Everyone's, you know, and the team is yep. like, you know, telling what's going to happen today. But uh, they end up trusting the model more than their own, their, their own judgment. So that was really cool to get uh, get the trust of the team with the technology. And then um, we used to set up the model for all these sailors going around the world, so they're doing the America's Cup, but they're doing these regattas around the world. And so we'd set it up for this location, this location, this location. And that was the idea of there was, well, that was the genesis of the idea. It's like, well, well imagine if we had this technology set up for everyone in the world and 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 they could do it. So um, initially it was going to be a joint venture between myself and Alinghi, and then Vanessa Vitarelli didn't want to do that. And then I made the bold, audacious move to start up the company. <laughs> Accurate forecast. Uh, how can it be? Right? Um, <laughs> it's extremely hard. Um, you soon realise that the you know the user interface is for some people more important than the accuracy of the forecast. Mm. Um, so that was the, that was the genesis of starting with Predict Wind. Um, when we started off with one developer, one marketing person, and now we've got you know about sixty people contributing to the product. Um, we're we've probably spent way too much in R and D. We're very passionate about what we do. We have sort of delved into a lot of different areas. Um, but you know, I mean, my biggest thing is I've got a lot of friends who, you know, have been you know, say racing and now cruising, and 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 to hear them sort of use the product and their feedback on it's really kind of is fuels our passion to keep it going. Mm. Well, I mean, it's a great story, and you know, coming from a being driven by sailors and from a, from sailing expertise, and certainly from a racing background, I mean, it's yes. it's, a, it's a great way to build a product because there's plenty of people that have ideas for building products tech and software wise, but don't, they've never walked in the shoes of the consumer. They can dream yes. up all sorts of features. Um, but, but if they, if they understand the core customer, um, yes. then, then you don't always get a great product. And I, I, 2019, I had some technical issues with predict when I changed the setup somehow. Oh, that's right. I, I, um, I, I, yeah, I changed the setup and, um, couldn't figure out how to fix it. And I, and I rang your office and I'm pretty sure it was, um, it was like about three or four days before Christmas and we were due to fly down to Sydney to do the Sydney Hobart. Yes. And um, the girl I got, whose name begins with K, but I forget her name now. Erin. Erin. Yeah. So she, yeah. so she gave me this amazing support, solved my problem. She was really knowledgeable. And, um, yeah. you know, and um, she said, have a nice Christmas. And we got chatting and I said, oh yeah, I'm doing yeah. Sydney Hobart. And she's like, oh yeah, me too. I'm like, oh cool. What boat are you on? She's like, oh, I'm on Wild Oats uh, 10. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like talking to this software support person and she's actually a highly skilled uh high skilled sailor on a professional race boat and you know it's just like the best customer support um yeah. experience i had in terms of knowledgeable people and then i know another time a couple of years ago now i i i i changed something in my settings and as always we're leaving on a passage on saturday or sunday and i decided yeah. to ring it you know four o'clock on friday afternoon from queensland which was your your six yeah. o'clock and yeah. um and you answered the phone and you're like uh you want to get and you you know you, you, you not only did you solve my problem um but then you spent uh it was a navigational issue that's right i was, I was trying to get from a to b and and yeah. um it was telling me i couldn't go through rocks and i couldn't figure out where the rocks were and um you told yeah. me how to fix that um and then told me about a whole lot of new features um at the time so um yeah. so yes yeah, so that's yeah. um it's pretty rare you get a company built by sailors 
they don't need or buy a specialist, I guess, in the field. They don't not yeah. only a great product, but then carry on supporting a great product with that level of knowledge as yeah. opposed to somebody from the Philippines yeah. that got at a call center saying, <laughs> computer says no, I can't help you. Um, try this, yeah. can't replicate the problem. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we've we invested as a company bigger. You have 15 people in the support team, and, and they are you know, probably the prerequisite because it is you have to be a signer of some description mm. and, and be passionate about what we do. Um, and so, yeah, I think that really, oh, as you, you've seen, sort of shines through. We, we know it's like to be out there um, on the water and, and how important forecasts are. So, so we do, you know, go, go the extra mile. And, you know, another guy on our team is, you know, ex Volvo Ocean Race, and, you know, we talk to customer and, you, know, you, you check your feel already because he knows he knows you know he's a he's a long time cruising cruising guy himself um so yeah we i mean and that's the big thing you know i, I tell our team is like you know we, we try to turn customers into fans you know because we're a small company we don't have a big marketing budget and so you know if we can get you know the, the best marketing is having a happy happy customer and so so a really great story for us to hear that um i'll be telling that the team in our next team meeting next Wednesday um, and telling them how David <laughs> talked to Karen and talked to myself. And and that's, yeah, it's really great because, yeah, it is so important when you have a product and, you know, we're trying to make complex weather, um, it is complex, complex weather, um, complex and accurate weather, simple and accessible to anyone, anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, and part of that is having great support. It doesn't matter how good the product is, you're always going to have questions. And um, yes, it's good to hear those stories. Yeah, and there's massive complexity in, in in what you do, way beyond what I can get my head around. And the challenge that customers have is that they 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 want a simple experience, but the complexity is doing doing the work to make it simple. But yes. you know, as I found a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a setup issue um, with with the, the new data I plan I moved to. I, I just couldn't get. I couldn't solve a couple of technical questions. And then Craig called me from the office on the Monday morning and well, he messaged me over the weekend, which I was impressed about because it was the weekend. And he called me Monday morning and solved the problem. And so uh, if you have faith in the business and you have faith in the product, you know that they'll solve your problem. Like oh, all these problems go away because at least you know somebody will fix your problem. Oh, because okay. yeah. I, I think, yeah, my, my experience has been with people get, people get frustrated when no one wants to help them solve their problem. Um, and the good thing about predict ones, you just know that they have the answers and <laughs> you just need to keep yeah. Just need to get the help sometimes. So, um, so I mean, from your like the way you know, I, I've gone from being a part-time cruising sailor to a part-time ocean crossing sailor to now it's my full-time business, right? And now I, you know, I yeah. sail more miles each year than I drive in a car. Um, wow. So my, so I, I kind of see your product from my eyes, but that's not necessarily everybody's eyes. But my perception is that Predict One just helps liberate everyday mum and dad couples yeah. families to go sailing and and to push push boundaries they wouldn't have pushed by going places they necessarily wouldn't have stretched to because of the yeah. confidence they have in weather forecasting, which when you're at sea, of course, is, you know, is, is right up there in terms of, you know, top two yeah. or three concerns. I mean, yeah. what's, what, how, how do you see, how do you see what your product's doing and has done in terms of liberating people to go sailing more confidently compared to the, the weather facts and the text-based data? Oh, data? Yeah. You know? No, it's, it's, it's night and day. I mean, Firstly, the modeling, the weather modeling technology in the last 20 years has come forward leaps and bounds. The accuracy is is just so much better than it used to be. Um, I mean, I, you know, meteorologist I work with with America's Cup for 10 years, and he was a top head of the whole modeling team at CSRO. You know, used to say to us, like, if people understood how complex the weather modeling is, they would be amazed at how accurate it is, you know, because, and obviously it doesn't get everything, and it's not accurate all the time, but, you know, you try, you try, like you say, just use the back to the weather facts days when you're trying to figure it out on your own. It's just night and day different. And yeah, you know, we are obviously a bit more complicated in terms of having six models rather than just one, but that gives you a real good sort of confidence level in the forecast. Um, but yeah, I mean, circling back to, you know, how does it help the average cruising sailor? I, mean, I, th I think, um, you know, I mean, our, my background was in racing um, and we started off, I think, probably targeting more the racing market soon realized that the cruising market's a lot bigger and, and we just needed to make this technology simpler for, for the cruising market. So, you know, one of the things I think we've done, you know, I'm very proud of that we've done is the, with, the, with the weather routing. The weather routing when we first started Predict One 13 years ago was really just the domain of yacht racing top navigators, you know. Yeah, they would download these grid files into some cost, you know, custom software 
and then they run the route. And I mean, I've I've done it myself. I've been a, a advisor for one of the Volvo Ocean Race teams, going around all different ports for Andrew Cake. And you know, you even you know the, the software inside and out, and you, you're running it. It takes you 30 minutes to sort of get the information and all the different models presented on that sort of software. Um, but now with with Predict Wind, you know, obviously you need to select your boat type and get the boat, boat polars um, sorted out. We've got a new AI boat polar module I can probably talk about later. Yep. But now it's just like the Google Maps of the sea. You, know, you just basically put, okay, I'm going from here. It shows you position on the map. Move the position to your start position, your start waypoint to your position. You obviously, you know where you're going to. Click the button and then bang, you get the graph of the weather, all the models for your wind, wind speed, your wave. Um, so it, it just makes it, a whole lot easier and you know i would say that the best form of seamanship is not getting caught out in bad weather you know mm. and i think with our technology i'd like to think certainly within the first five five days of your trip there's no excuse you really shouldn't get caught out in bad weather and um that just it, yeah so it gives people a lot more confidence when they're getting offshore um to have that because i'd say 50 percent of our customers i'd say 50 percent have had some experience or you know have a, a background but there's probably at least half of them where, you know, we go, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haven't really been on a boat much at all. They're heading yeah. off into the wild blue yonder with their family. And this stuff is like, you know, they literally get to the other end and say, thank you for saving our lives, you know. Um, so it's, it's kind of really satisfying to be helping people in, in, in that level. Yeah. And and, that, and the proof's in the pudding too, right? Because they, they, they made it safely to the other end. So you know, it, it's yeah. consequences when you think about, there's not many things we do in life when, we can, when we're when we out of helicopter range and so far from help and can just disappear at night if things go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so, so and just and just jumping sideways there, but um, one of the things that you explained to me a couple of years ago now probably was the, the CAPE index and, and, yes. and how that works. And I try and explain that to people, but I'm, I'm not sure I do a very good job, but I I, I kind of explain it as as likelihood of like a atmospheric volatility, which just means uh, and my the way I've translated over the last couple of years is mu much more likely to get more squally type weather where you know yes. even the forecast says twenty to twenty five, yes. we've had squalls of forty or fifty because yes. of heightened volatility, yes. you know w warmer time of the year or warmer locations, more at atmospheric, um, um, you know a lot lot more bigger bigger cumulonimbus clouds and you know the things that come right. out of those and so i think um for some people and i've had forecast discussions with some people and everyone's an expert as you know um and yeah. they're like oh well the forecast said 2025 but we saw 40 but they haven't yeah. translated that that was the average but when localized yes. schools come yes. along yes. systems rain wind off the front of those yes. you're going to get yes. maybe two maybe three times the average and so do you right. want to just decide maybe dive into cape and talk about cape and 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 how like as a user you want to use that to interpret what the base forecast means and what could also happen with the localized volatility and and again with to be fair to predict when you're you're not tracking individual schools across the ocean and you can't tell about hey at mm -hmm. 1752 hours today you you might get hit by a 40 knot gust when the squad arrives at your boat like people are a little yeah. bit unrealistic about what weather forecasting yeah. kind of means yeah. with that, that kind yeah. of stuff i think yeah, and I tell you, you know, you have an accurate forecast, give it to 10 different people and you get 10 different sort of scoring ratings, you know, like like you say, you know, we, we're happy to get the forecast right within a few hours, it's, it's a fantastic forecast. Mm. I don't forget it, you know, it's just luck. Um, but yeah, so I mean, sticking back to what you said, it's just so important because you have the average wind speed, the average forecast, but then you, there's, there's, there's things like CAPE, which is, you know, CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy which is basically the amount of mixing in the atmosphere. So it's like, you know, you look at some days and you see these cumulus clouds and they're very, you know, volatile. They're going up. There's like, you know, cape. So the things are arising and, and then you can get things like thunderstorms forming out of that. So if you've got a high cape in the atmosphere, you've got more chance of a thunderstorm. It's not going to tell you exactly where the thunderstorm is, but mm -hmm. you know that, that that's likely to happen. So, um, you know, we do also have from the ECMWF model, we do have a lightning index in there as well. That's you know the chance of lightning, um, and so one of the things that we do have um, predict now predict when now is we have you know the extreme weather events, and so we actually look at all that data. So if you're doing a weather route or even look at our, the tables for a forecast location, it'll have these um, danger symbols 
that are on the weather out or on the tables and then you can click on them and it might be might be wind against current you know it might be cape or it might be you know heavy rain and, and gusts over 25 knots which you know chance of a rainfall so it just gives you sort of alerts you to that sort of chance of these extreme weather events happening so that you can then you, you know you can move. recently i delivered a boat up to fiji with with uh, craig craig you talked about before so he's the professional delivery captain and i'm i was just the you know, i was just the uh, crew but it's fun to tag along um but he you know he's you know he's a great great guy to sail with and and we you know we're going along and we see the cape got quite high and and the other thing too that we do we also have now is we have um these uh, what they call GNDSS weather warnings. So GNDSS is a global marine distress system set up mainly for communications on boats so that someone's on a commercial boat, they pick up the, you know, the emergency thing and it goes straight through to the emergency authorities. But as part of that, they have a, a weather network around the world and they divide the world up into different areas and each uh, national weather center is responsible for a different area. So, you know, in Australia, for example, you know, it goes off Australian waters. New Zealand's responsible up to the sort of Fiji, um, and and they issue these you know, weather warnings. You know, there might be a tropical cyclone, or there might be a you know a front, or there might be a trough, or and they actually describe all these things as a text-based forecast. And so we actually grab that all that data, and then using machine learning AI, we actually reverse engineer it and create graphical elements that we display on top of you know, of the, you know, the weather maps or the files. Um, so yeah, for example, going to Fiji, you know, the Cape was high, looked at these, at the GNDSS forecast, it was a warning issued by the Fiji Met Office, thunderstorms and lightning. So you not only had the high Cape from the model, but you also had the, the thing from the Fiji Met Office. And sure enough, we had, you know, lightning and, you know, lightning around us and different, you know, different thunderstorms. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's gold to have that sort of information so that you're just aware of what's going on and you can prepare for it because there's nothing worse than, you know, coming across something and, you you know, you got all your, you're expecting 15 knots and you get the thunderstorm comes through. And it's like 35 knots and rain. And where did that come from? You know, what? Um, at least you've got some idea that this, so it's, it's sort of been a problem in the past where people look at the average forecast and they would never look at the Cape. Because mm. it's kind of like you know something you know, you just oh what's the wind strength yeah and now with these these alerts it's kind of like we're trying to make it pretty hard for you to miss them yeah, yeah the way you've overlaid all that now is really cool because you used to have to dive off into a separate area and then work out by longitude and latitude whether you're in that box or not yes. and it, it just got hard to do so yes. I mean, turning weather into a paint by numbers and a, and a dashboard with bringing that information to yes. one place is really cool like it's just made it so much it's made it easier for a lay person like me to understand, but it's just made it easier to pay attention to it because you don't have to dive off down different rabbit holes to find it and then try and, you know, bring it back in your mind to whether it works. Oh, oh, I mean, I, I'd read a GNDC's forecast and, you know, I mean, I think I'm an engineer and I'm pretty technical and I go, oh my days, to actually translate this. I mean, if you could spend half an hour, an hour doing yeah, that. I mean, yeah. it's got the time to do that, you know? So yeah. we just, now it's just there on the, on the, on the, um, on the map and, yeah, it's pretty exciting to see that um, project go through. Yeah, absolutely. And and then, I mean, the other the other tool which we use a a lot um, day and night is we run radar, and the you know the latest radar systems are color coding the squalls. They just literally match like a rain radar app you'd have at home, and so yes. you can see when they change from yellow to gray to black, there's a lot more intensity in and in, in what's yes. hitting towards you and how far away it is, and you know the track, yes. and so. Yeah. Even that's become so much easier and safer to manage for the layperson in terms of totally. understanding that kind of stuff. And it's, uh, it's so nice we're doing it on the way to Fiji. You just track them, right? You see, you actually, you know, see this thing, you just track it and you can see, oh, it's going to, oh, yeah. it's going to miss us, or, uh oh, we think we better put another reef in here, or, yeah. or whatever. So it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. No, definitely. So, and just on the polar side, um, so, uh, a lot of sailors understand polars, but some some lay people don't understand actually what what is a polar and what it means, and kind of, of can be a little bit intimidated by it. Um, so do you want to just yeah. explain does, does explain polar in the simplest terms um, for somebody listening to this that hasn't this you know about to head off and haven't hadn't even thought about what a boat polar is? So a polar is just describing the boat's performance in different conditions. So it just shows you how fast the boat's going to go for a given wind speed, 
and a given wind angle. So, because obviously for our weather routing, we need to know, you know, what, what the boat can do. So it's the two things that makes the weather route accurate. One is the forecast, but the other is the boat polar. So they're, they're both very important. So if your boat polar is inaccurate, it means that, you know, your boat will be in the wrong position and day two, day three, day four. In fact, by day five or six, it'll be a completely the wrong position because you think you're going to go at this speed and, and this and this wind angle, but you might be going a lot slower or faster. So it's it's really important to get that right. And typically, you know, these boat polars you can get from yacht designers. So they're, you know, what they call VPP programs, velocity prediction programs. So they're a computer model which tells you how fast your boat's going to go. Um, but they quite often don't match reality. Like they're completely wrong. You know, like even, even in the America's Cup, we get a VPP from the designer and the VPP is just doesn't, you just throw it out the window. Um, see, but it's a, it's a starting point. And one of the things we've developed, um, we just actually you know, have a mail going out this, this weekend is um, what we call AI polars. And so we have a device, I know you've got one, David, as, as a data hub, and it can interface in with your boat's instrumentation system on the N2K network and get all the data from the instrumentation system average it over one minute, send that data back to our service, and then compare you know, your actual performance of your boat versus the boat polar, and, and using machine learning techniques decide whether, okay, well, for example, it's gonna see if you're just motoring upwind um, or you're anchored, it's gonna discard that data. Yeah. But generally it's gonna basically, if that data's pretty close to your polar, it's gonna use more and more, and it's gonna actually improve, it's gonna, it's like personalizing the polar to the way you sail the boat. So the beauty is like, you know, you may not sail the boat, you know, like for example, we're actually looking to change this for night. So we have a, a nighttime mode as well as a daytime mode. So because quite often during the night, you sail a boat a lot slower. So we'll actually the feature we haven't actually implemented yet, that's in the pipeline in the next month will be to have, have this nighttime, daytime thing. So you sail wow. slower at night, that'll be taken count of in, in the polar. So the more data you log, the better your polar will be, the more accurate your weather out will be. Yeah. Um, and it can be surprisingly yeah. accurate when you get it really, really right. The, but that the live the live submission of boat speed back to you for, for autumn, polar automation, like, that's amazing. But just the concept of that is just really, really cool. Um, and one thing, one, thing I've, one thing I've left out to you there, which is kind of like a, we think it's a groundbreaking feature that no one else is doing is that Quite often, we, especially in America, you know, with the Volvo Ocean Race teams, they would develop these polars and we get them pretty accurate, you know, around the around the harbour, inshore waters. It would be fantastic. And you go offshore, oh, forget it. It's just completely out the window because you're you're now in these big swells. So you know, you're punching into a, a you know three or four meter swell going upwind versus flat water. What, your polar is just completely wrong. Or you got you know you got three meters of swell behind you. You're going a lot faster. So yeah. what we actually use is we use the ECMWF um, wave forecast, which is the most accurate wave model out there. And we use that um, to, in the polar, so the polar is not just a two-dimensional polar, it's it's like a five-dimensional polar that takes into account wave conditions. So it's actually looking at your wave conditions as well as your, you know, your, your wind angle and your wind speed and your boat speed. So um, that's really cool. So it's really, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's really personalizing to the way what your experience and, and, and actually learning as the more you sail, the more it's going to get more accurate. Yeah. I mean, this stuff sounds really cool. and uh, But I just shuddered to think of the billions of calculations and all the variables that you guys have to write software for to manage all, all of this. I mean, it's, it's a huge, a huge machine from a complexity point of view to produce this kind of data at a boat level, at a swell level, at a, you know, it's, it's yeah. amazing. Really. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we had, when we first started the company, I mean, it was just crazy. We we basically, you know, put all my money into it. We, I think I bought one hundred forty thousand US dollars worth of Dell servers, put them in a server farm, and then I think I sold them three years later for ten thousand US dollars. <laughs> uh, um, and, and then you know, I'd lose sleepless nights because you know we you know one would fall over and you had to get a technician in to yeah. the server farm to to fix it and. And it was just a complete nightmare. Um, and then we made, was, when Amazon was sort of in the early days, we went to Amazon Web Services. Yeah. Um, 
So in, back in the day, we, we couldn't actually run the whole weather model for the whole world at one time. We had region one, region two, region three, region four. We only run two regions at one time. So we just try and get the forecast out for when you wake up in the morning. Yeah. Um, now we, with Amazon, we just, we spin up all these computing instances and we only use them for like an hour and a half, two hours. And then we shut them down. So you only pay for the time you use. So yeah. we have access to like just literally super computing power to run our model. Um, and then, yeah, and all these other services we're talking about, like the Polars, I mean, they, they definitely use your computing power. Probably the, the, um, the weather routing uses a lot of computing power. We have spent a lot of money on having a whole, a whole rack of, well, not a rack, but basically a whole lot of instances that are dedicated to the, to the routing. So that when you want to route it, there's literally billions of calculations. Um, and it's doing some very clever stuff. I mean, I, I, I don't know if we want to get into it, but the, 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 the wave routing component is completely unique to Predict Wind. And, and that is, we went to a naval architect and modeled monohulls and catamarans in every possible wave state. And so that when you when you run the weather route, we can we can we're not only just using the primary swell that you download, but we're using primary, secondary, and tertiary, and we're modeling your boat how it's going to react in those things. So yeah, it's going to slow down a certain amount um, or speed up, and then and then we can predict the amount of roll the boat's going to have, which you know you, as you know is you know above a certain amount, it's very unsafe to be on deck. Um, mm -hmm. And then the vertical acceleration related to seasickness and then slamming, you know. So, so you can really get a good idea how your boat's going to perform. You think, well, it's probably a bit over the top, probably don't need that. But I mean, I use that myself just doing Auckland Fiji. I mean, I was nervous about <laughs> was eating our own dog food, so to speak, you know. We, <laughs> and um, anyway, the uh, it was like a three and a half, four meter swell. I think I might have mentioned this the other time I talked to you, but it was behind us. And then looking at those parameters, you'd say it's actually that's going to be fine and sure enough it was because the swell was a long period yeah and you can actually see how the boat was going to react um so that's personalized to your boat because you actually put in the dimensions of your boat you put in the, the length the beam and the displacement so um yeah, yeah we had you know we had basically i remember one um when we first launched this feature we had one customer who did a youtube um thing on it and he compared the forecast before the trip to during the trip and then he had his his wife comment on the swell state in, in one word. And and um, anyway, it, it lined up with the forecast and, and his wife was happy. So he's pretty well. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, I mean, that's fascinating when you think about the potential with that and a little, only a few steps to set up, but you, you can, you can sail to Fiji and have a absolutely great trip because you mowed the boat right and you angled the swell right. You can talk to another couple on dock who had a horrendous time, just because yes. they just didn't align their boat to the the sea state and and made life really hard for themselves. So, having tools that help you do that. It was so. So the weather routing, the weather routing is one component, and and the weather routing on steroids is what we call the departure planning. So before you leave the dock, you can do a weather route for day one, day two, day three, and day four, and then it compares all that data well, you know so you, you you make the decision but you compare it and you can see how the boat's going to be for roll and for you know boat slamming and for vertical acceleration and the maximum wind speed minimum speed you, you know, your time upwind your time reaching so it makes that departure date a lot easier to decide what you're going to do and not just for any you know you're not just talking to a weather router that doesn't know your boat and the way you sail your boat this is this is for you the yeah way you sail your boat and for your boat and 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 that's what you're talking about there you know like you know when you depart the right day is so critical and that's what cruisers do right sit around and talk about when are we going to leave what we're going to do yeah and here this is a tool that just makes that thing really personalized for you and and and, and we think you know amazing so. oh, departure planning is cool and when you sit there and you run it and it says leave today and you'll have, you know, 40% upwind sailing, leave in two days, you'll have uh, reaching and running and 2% upwind. And you're like, well, we'll just wait two days. Like that is just the way that balls are down to a really simple go, no yeah. go, wait decision. It's just, yeah, I, I love that feature. And, and even the difference of a day because of your boat pullers then put you in a different position than you would have a day later or earlier. Mm -hmm. The difference that can change your whole passage just by that difference of a day or two days or three days 
you know, it's that's a that's a pretty cool little tool, um, the, the departure planning tool. So, um, okay. So, and the other thing that popped up, um, a, well, a few months ago now, but the AIS data that's been able to download Ooh. instead of being stuck with only what your AIS picks up or filters out within your VH aerial range. Sure. Now yeah. Download the weather for like a zone. All the AIS data comes down for all the ships and yachts that are there. That you know, you may be six or twelve or eighteen hours away, but yeah. see all of it now. How like how does it actually work? Because we we couldn't figure that out, but it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Because I mean, as you say, AOS on a boat, you're sort of limited to the VHF range. It's just 25 nautical miles. Um, but yeah, one of our weather suppliers, Spy, they have the biggest, what they call nano satellite network in the world. And um, so they're receiving, you know, data, one, of their, one of the features of these satellites is they receive AOS data from, from, from boats because the signal can go a lot further when it goes directly straight up into, the, into space rather than going across the, earth, the curvature of the earth and um so they're collecting all this data so basically you know any commercial vessel as you know has to have aos on or should have it on mm -hmm. um and it, it doesn't always work with class b vessels you know recreational vehicles depends on how well your aos receiver is installed and what brand it is um but essentially all the commercial vessels they have all that data and we've we pay a lot of money for that data um and we thought well, why not? It's just a great safety feature for our customers. So when you're in the offshore app or even you know, on the website, you can download 300 nautical mile area and see what's going to happen that night. You know, and you can see we're going to go through some fishing vessels. There's some fishing vessels up here. Well, the weather rally might be taking us through there, but let's put a waypoint out here so we can miss <laughs> we're yeah. sailing through nets. Um, you know, there's, like, there's about four or five container ships heading our way. We need to actually, you know, be on our A game tonight and make sure that we actually keep an eye for it. And then, you know, when we were going to Fiji, we we had, um, our, for some reason, our AS system was not working so well, but we had, we were getting the, the, the boats through through our network and we could see, yeah, going pretty good. We're, we're kind of beating them. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so the competitive uh, side came out. But um, no, I think it's, a, it's, it's an amazing feature for sure. Good safety. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so then um we've recently installed Data Hub and that just opens up a whole new world of extra mm. extra tools and features. So do you want to just spend a little bit of time just talking about what it what Data Hub is and what it what it does and what it allows you to do now, which is you know, just it's like another generational step beyond, you know, where the predict wind iridium go slow download model was. We, we, you know, partly we can now don't download weather in a minute or two sometimes in seconds as opposed to an hour to an hour and a half um yeah. and partly there's extra extra things and features available and, and stuff that we're passing back now in terms of live wind and, and location data and live wind direction data and through, through through the web page tracker and so yeah do you yeah. want to talk a bit about stuff because people people listening to this are listening to it from a technical point of view what, what does predict when how does it work or i'm a user but what else have what else have they done that i don't know about I haven't tried so don't be afraid to be technical because okay. you know, there's one want to know the, the nuts and bolts because that's that's how they can, you know, embrace these extra features that they may not fully understand or appreciate that that you know of obviously very, very well given you design them. Totally, totally. Yeah, I mean I'd like to take credit for the Data Hub as their own product for sure, but it's it started off with the relationship we had with another company in the US. I uh, you know the owner of that company very well. He retired. Um, sold his company to, uh, to another, a, um, another company um, and then his wife said you need to get back to work you're driving me nuts um, so he <laughs> he's a long time cruiser he, he basically he would cruise six months of the year and then he would, he would work in his business six months you know he'd obviously looking work on his boat so he's been in that um, industry for 30 years done developed a whole lot of products and um He'd used Predict when he was a web partner with him. And so he came up with the idea of the, the Starter Hub um, and really drove that. We were sort of, you know, our main focus has really been in the, in the weather side and not really on the hardware side. Um, so he he sold us this concept. Um, and we started off this thing just purely being a, a, a low-cost device for GPS tracking. And the idea being is it wouldn't actually do any communication, so that you could actually connect it to any other communication device or any other satellite communication device and it'll work with the Starlink, it'll work with the Go, the Go Exec. Um, and and just 
does GPS tracking. I mean, the great thing about it is because you're getting, it's got a very, it's got an N2K interface, you're getting all the data from your instrumentation system. So, so the GPS data you're getting is, is from as accurate as you can get. So, so that, uh, that was kind of the primary thing, GPS tracking. And then we just found a whole lot of other features we've tacked onto it. So this is a, a smart device, in our opinion, everyone should have it. It's not a, a very expensive device and it um, just does a whole lot of things. So uh, you can probably uh, can sort of touch on it. We <laughs> have a, a mail service. So if you're on a low speed satellite device like a Go or Go Exec, it does predict, we have predict mail, uh, email service. Um, and because with the, also with the GPS tracking, not only are we actually sending your GPS data, we're actually sending your wind speed and direction data as well. Mm. So on your tracking page, you can actually, you know, friends and family can see exactly what wind speed and direction you're ex experiencing. So that's pretty cool. Like, you, you know, the forecast might be, dare I say it, wrong, um, but you can actually see the, the wind speed and direction on, on your thing. Oh, well, it's actually, you know, heading into a storm, but they've actually they've only got 25 knots. They haven't got 35 knots. Yeah. Um, so that's a, it's a pretty nice, nice thing. Um, it can actually broadcast that GPS data that you get down through from your instruments on your Wi-Fi network. So that, say your tablets, you, know, you might have a Navionics app, for example, running on your iPad. Well, you can, sure, you can use the GPS in your iPad, but the GPS in your iPad is nowhere near as accurate as the GPS data coming from your instruments. It's, it's up on the deck, it's got a clear view of the horizon, it's it's way more accurate. So so that's, that's a, you know, if you're using it for navigation, you really should, have some accurate data behind it, so that's important. Um, and then with the AAS data, we we, um, we actually encourage users to broadcast that AAS data back to back to our service, so it just makes the whole network safer. So basically, we are getting you know boats all around the world that are broadcasting their what they're receiving in from their instrumentation system at AAS, and it's going back up to our service, and that's rebroadcasted to everyone else out there. So that makes the whole world safer. It has a firewall on it, so if you want to block traffic, you can actually, you know, block it to, to keep your costs down in terms of, you know, data coming in. Um, you can register it for predict wind traffic only, for example. Um, boat polars, so we, we talked about that before, that's the data hub, that's yep. so sort of the engine room of that. Um, remote support, so you might, for example, have a problem with your instrumentation system, and we've seen this, and there's something's gone whack. Well, someone can, a technician can log into this device remotely, actually see the data streaming in and detect what the problem is. Um, we, you know, log log the data so you can actually see, you know, see your position and see the AES data. So if there's an insurance claim or something like that, um, you have a collision at sea, that's all been recorded. So, so yeah, lots of good reasons to have the data hub. Um, and you know, I think that it's a it's a great you know great device. It's one of those things that you think, oh, we probably you know, you know, but once you've used it and some some of the features, you'll find it's like, uh, how do we do without it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we, I mean, we get thousands of people visiting the the live tracker page, and like having the live win now is quite cool because in times in the past, we're like, we had forty to fifty knots for three hours, and people are like, oh, the forecast says twenty. And it was almost yeah, like, yeah. are you exaggerating how big the fish is that you caught? You know, <laughs> that, 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 without that appreciate, without the appreciation of squally conditions. So, for being able to yeah. see that live wind speed yeah. direction, boat speed data is is quite yeah. cool. And then, and now images. Um, in terms of you know, we've used their predict wind blog a lot for posting updates. Yeah. Sorry, I'm in the flight path with Ken's Airport. I'm not sure if you can hear the flight behind me, but no, no I can hear it. Okay, cool. Um, um. But but we so we've used a daily blog um, update feature a lot um, with the live tracker embedded in the web page, which you know even for friends and family following your journey, even your yes. kids at home, if you if you're empty nesters yeah. and you're off around the world, you know your kids want to keep an eye on mum dad. It's a cool yeah. feature. But I think you mentioned a couple of weeks ago with image image uploading. Now that's that's easier to do with some of the new data options that are available. Where historically you'd upload images, but they'd only sort of only load once you're back online, kind of. Um, that's totally, awesome. yeah, yeah. So with the, uh, yeah, with the with the Go Exec, for example, you can now um, we have an unlimited data plan, uh, which covers you know basically you know we I mean it's it's unlimited for predict wind data, 
Um, but yes, from one of the features you can do is upload your images to your blog and um, you can upload as many as you want. It resamples them down to you know, a sensible size. Um, you know, the, uh, the data downloads on Predict Window are limited to four megabytes, but most people use like half a megabyte. You can obviously do unlimited uh, weather routes because they're so small. Um, yeah. So yeah, so it's, it's kind of like that's changed the game. It'll change the landscape a lot, having these these plans that are reasonable. And then obviously Starlink is, you know, we, we think it's fantastic. So Starlink is, we we actually, I mean, if I had a boat, I'd have both. You know, have the, like you do, David, you have yeah. the Starlink and you have the, and you have the Iridium as a backup. Yeah. And um, so yeah, I think um, it's it's uh, but the world's changed, right? And, and it's changed. Sort of, uh, and yeah, and, like and I think I think it's great because you know yeah. getting we want people to get weather data, you know, accurate weather data wherever they are, and whether they get it from Starlink or from GoExec or, or whatever is fine. Um, so I think that's uh, it's a real positive thing. Yeah. Well, and if you haven't kept up with it, and and you know it's it's recent to us as well. The world's changed in the last six months. Like, and yes. uh, well, I'm not sure what the exact time period is, but in terms of accessibility with the iridium go exec and with yeah. starling coastal or you know or, or you know ocean and with prices yeah. coming down you can pretty much tailor those two options to suit your life yes. and you can now go to sea and pay bills and clear emails and keep in touch with the kids and or you can go off the grid and get as much weather as you want you can choose packages or options to suit what you're aiming to do and yeah. arguably you're not tied to the shore like you used to be previously if you can mm -hmm. operate work wise or communication wise and see if you're online you've got those options now and so i really encourage you to go to the predict Wind website because you've got everything clearly laid out for predict Wind and for starlink and for you know various other options so that people can figure out what suits their budget and what suits their needs and some people are happily go off the grid but want weather 24 7 some people want to stay on the grid but can then go yeah. further field in their boat than they could have because of you know totally. the maintain communication ashore and bill payments and bits and pieces so it's a pretty cool world and it's all changed yeah. like recently yeah. put starlink on our, our website and we've got that comparison you know with our products so, you know we think it's i think you know if you need you need to run your business like you do david and if you want to be on the grid yeah starlink is, is a must-have for sure um um but you know we, there is obviously we just you know on the safety side of things we just think that it's important to have a device that you know does have a backup battery you know, it's got full IP rating that's waterproof rating, whereas, you know, Starlink's just a standard household router down below decks. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, I mean, Starlink, I mean, I, I use it up my holiday house in New Zealand and, you know, it had cut, it's cut out a few times in heavy rain. So I think, you know, it's just, I think there's just the, the, you know, thing of having that sort of, having both options is the best if you can't afford it. Yeah. Um, and and that's, but hey, you know, we, we're getting like a talk to the, um, a customer the other day, he, he, you know, he used Predict Win 10 years ago, found it too hard um, and was using it, I'm not going to say the name, but another competitor and 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 he didn't use anything offshore. And now he's got Starlink and now he's got a data hub um, and he's got our stuff. So it's all good for us, you know. Yeah. Um, we, we're in the game of selling weather. I mean, communications is, is we, we started off the communications game only because we were frustrated with people buy, they buy a satellite phone that, you know, back in the day, you remember this, yeah. you have a USB cable that went into your laptop, you plug it in, you had to get the USB drivers going, and then the whole computer would try and download Windows updates through the Lumen phone, and you'd, most people never got past step one. Yeah. And so the Iridium Go came out, and we thought, okay, this is a, a good chance to people to do it properly, and, you know, it did transform that, that market. Um, so it was just to get people to actually get weather data offshore, but... So that, that's kind of our motivation for doing it. Um, so yeah, because that's great. I think it's awesome how it's getting more accessible and easier. So it, there's, there's you know, no excuse not to, to be able to get the data now, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and we're still figuring it all out and, and, and the possibilities are fantastic. But equally, if you're doing a bit of cruising, there's a hybrid where you can turn your phone plan off and move to data when you're offshore and move to, you know, move to using WhatsApp as opposed to having to have mobile phone when you're in different countries and like you say you know yeah. you still got to think about when i'm climbing into my life raft i'm not carrying my uh starting dish under one arm i need my iridium go device which i can take with me into the yeah. life raft because um yeah, yeah everything's good while you got power but you got to also think about life after power or life without a boat um 
and and then yeah. you, you get the right hybrid model for you between your existing mobile phone plans, household plans, the Redium Go, Starlink. There's 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 a solution there for everybody. It's different for everybody, but there's, oh. you, there's nothing you can't do now, reasonably cost effectively. And when we say reasonably cost effectively, we're talking about a few hundred dollars a month. But yes. to move your life offshore or coastally, or just to disappear for a month around New Zealand or up to the Pacific for three months, yes. you know, you can just do whatever you want now, really. Um, and so, just oh. key thing is to go research it, and and the, and the team at Predict Wind will help you figure that stuff out too, in terms of what you need for you, um, help you set it up. And 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 I'm not really a tech guy, but I'm I've become a bit of a tech guy because you just have to figure this stuff out. But what I love is there's people that help you set this stuff up, and the and as much as people put things off because they think it'll be painful, it's actually not that painful. You get it installed, you follow the instructions, you get some support, and then it's done. And like a Redium Go, once I set it up seven or eight years ago, it's just worked ever since. It's just worked every time yeah. since set up. And once it's set up, you know, your life's kind of easy. And 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 whether it's on your tablet or on your phone or on your desktop, you've got all those options. Um, so. You know, it's just, the, it's just the, the only thing I, I would say, and this is the big problem that we come across a lot, um, is just make sure you get it set up early. I just can't say no, no Friday when you're departing Saturday, <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. And that's such a common thing, people, it, it's, you know, like they're ready to go as a go, exec. It's not something you just like you do it on the, the, the few days before and try and read the manual as you, you, you're selling out the harbor. It, honestly, it won't work, you know. No. In fact, I would say just don't even bother buying it, you know. Um, so, you know, you want to store it at least a month before so you become familiar. Because it's like you say, once you understand it and get it going, it's easy, you know. But it but it does take a bit of time. Um, and, you know, that's why we're here to help. You know, we, we, we're we working very hard on improving our help documentation over the years. And we've, um, but, you know, there's there's a support team here ready to help you, as, as David's mentioned before. So yeah, it just but just do it early and then and then it becomes and then also use it. So you want to be using these systems, whatever you've got, at least a month before, so that when you go offshore, this it's like second nature. And that re re relates not just the communication device, but also product one. Yeah. Um, because you know, once you've used it for a month, it becomes second nature. And then when you're offshore, it's it's easy peasy. Yeah, and you need phone access and you need data access to complete the setup quite often. So Hence, once you yeah. depart, you're stuffed if you're offline and out of phone range, um, yeah, 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 and you need yeah, it. So, um, yeah, it's good. Um, well, that's great, John, and um, and thank you so much for putting the time aside. It, it, I mean, I only know what I know as a user, but there's so much more innovation coming down the pipe, and there just seems to pop out of new features um, with what you guys yeah. do, which is which is it really is um, cool to watch. Um, is there anything else you want to? share that we haven't touched on or anything else you've got coming down the pipe you want to sort of talk about now so in terms of looking into the future even even further in terms of what's what's yeah. boiling away in the background yeah yeah sure i mean I, I don't normally try and divulge these things but i will on your show um uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have um these uh we've been working on for the last couple of years um current modeling this is tidal currents um as opposed to ocean currents. So we already have ocean currents in a system from three different models. So the, the, it's actually like an atmospheric model. It's actually an ocean model. Um, but tidal currents, um, you know, typically there have been certain areas that around the world that have tidal current models, like, you know, the English Channel, for example, or, you know, there might be a few areas like Sydney Harbour or whatever, but we've actually, we've modeled pretty much the whole coastlines of the whole world. Um, Wow. And so, and so this this is quite a game changer. And I think it's, you know I think it's a it's a big deal for for cruising customers. And I'll say why is because one of those extreme weather events is actually wind against current. Because you you know it's like when you get two knots of current against the wind, yeah. you can get some really nasty wave conditions. And yeah. So that's something you want to know about. And it actually is it is a um, feature already within within the, the weather routing, but it's only for ocean currents. So if we have when we have the tidal currents in there as well, that'll pop up as an extreme weather event. So, so we're really super excited about it. It's a world first, as far as we know, no one else has done it. Um, and uh, yes, we're hoping to get that released in the next uh, one or two months. Um, cool. Yeah, so that's that's exciting. Um, well, yeah, that's um, that's that's really really that's really really cool. That's that's um, and that affects a lot of people. I think. I mean, we 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 left um. Southport in December last year, south of Sydney, and you know, unfortunately, I left till the 16th of December to leave to get down there for the Hobart, and we had 
we had 20 to 35 knots southeasterlies against an east of Australian current running south. So wind yeah. against current. And we had yeah. basically hull slamming upwind four and a half days to get to Sydney. It normally would take two. Um, yes. Now the yacht Maritimo TP52 left just before us, had to retire to Coffs Harbour with their masks going through their deck from the hull slamming. So that just translates into sick, seasick people and really hard on yeah. your boat. And again, yeah. from a cruising sailor point of view, if you can go around that or avoid that or just wait for it to pass, that is quite that is quite critical information that that's translated into massive discomfort when you are upwind in this current um, when winding yeah. is tied. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard I've heard also I've never been there, but I've heard also stuff about a Gulf Stream, Gulf Stream too off the US coast where you've got wind against yeah. current and the impact that can have on people. Oh well, it's extreme, isn't it? I mean, you know, the currents there are huge. So um, yeah, that, it, it is that that wind against current things just can create some some very nasty. Uh, really unsafe conditions. So, mm. so that and that's that's where I think that this um, thing, which is obviously we already have that in there with the Gulf Stream and these, you know, the, the currents along with Australia there. Yeah. But this is just the next level. So that because you know most coastlines in the world are exposed to tidal currents, mm -hmm. and um, and it's going to be a yeah I think a huge thing. So we'll, we should probably even release a, a, a dedicated app to that. I mean, all the features will be in Predict Wind. We will mm -hmm. have a dedicated app for current. Oh wow. Um, Yes. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yes, uh, yeah. oh, yes, and there's a bunch of there's a bunch of other things, but I, I'll probably go on for a yeah. couple of hours. On. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And your developers will shoot you if you say they'll be yeah. out in a few months when there's traveling yeah. two years where the work to promise, build. You promise too much. Development usually takes longer than you think. It's a, it's a sort of thrill in, in development. You think it's going to take X amount, and you just times it by five because that's you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. So um, that's, uh, that's where all our well, not all, but a big chunk of our money goes is development, so, so mm -hmm. which is good. I mean, this is what we enjoy doing, what we're doing, developing yeah. new things, making it better and better. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and congratulations to you on, on building such a successful business in the sense that it's a, a product that people love and uh, it changes their lives, keeps them safe. Um, and you know, software development is like an arms race. You just got to keep throwing more, throwing more money at it. Yeah. It never ends. You're never done. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then there's a million ideas that customers send into you that I think you can yeah, roll out yeah, next yeah. week as well. That doesn't fit no, the yeah. product roadmap. So, yeah, Tell yeah. Me about it. You, you yeah. Know, it sounds like you know well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've gone from tech guy for 20 years to full time sailor. Um, at the start of COVID, and I don't miss the tech side of it. It's just, it's just, it's, it's hard work, and it's a, it's easy yeah. for people not to appreciate how much funding is required yeah. to fund these things and you know a hit count mm -hmm. 60 people contributing to your business is no mean feat um there's a lot of mouths to feed and and you know all, all, all the stress and risk that goes with that so i think you're, you know your product's amazingly accessible for the price and for what it delivers in return so it's a yeah mm -hmm. i salute you because um you know there's people that 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 create products that aren't great um there's people that charge a lot for products and the value for money with your product and the reliability and the support is you know is just bang on so um and we we couldn't again we couldn't do what we do and we you know we're pushing into sub-antarctic islands next year and eventually cape mm -hmm. horn and antarctica the following year and st stuff that's that's miles beyond what i would have dreamed of five years ago but without the confidence with weather there's just no way we'd be setting off on these yeah. ambitious yeah. passages mm -hmm. because um and throw caution to the wind really and uh, we wouldn't be able to do it so mm -hmm. so uh, yeah it uh, is near and dear to my heart awesome, awesome to hear that it's fantastic so, yeah and yeah great great yeah really great i mean um uh, you're gonna you're gonna feature big time on my next support meeting i tell you with all the team that'll be great <laughs> oh well that's good <laughs> yeah well and and like we're always happy to test stuff and try stuff and give you feedback um as you know so um because yeah we love the product and, it, and it, it's just part of our daily part of our daily lives so um and we're about to leave uh, in two days time to sail from uh from cairns to Around the Cape York to Darwin, so I've been uh, into crocodile country. So I've been, there's, hey, there's no crocodile alerts on Predict Wind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll be running the models for the last three days as as, as the weather started to unfold. Now, um, you know, ten days ahead to see what that that looks like. So um, you know, it's it's uh, it's cool. Um, that's great. Well, um, thanks so much, John, and thanks for putting aside the the time this morning. And um, no problem. Yeah, I'll, sure. um, and I'll I'll flick you some details as, as a bit of a follow up and. Uh, and let you know when it's out and uh and uh yeah congratulations again and look forward to continuing to benefit from predict windows we do and encourage you know any sale at any level to go go check it out if they haven't haven't tried it or haven't, yeah. haven't used the product or just start by downloading the app from the app store and you know there's also there's also it's a freemium type product there's all sorts of free 
tools um and benefits available and there's there's premium tools available as well for those that really need them so um yeah, 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 yeah. awesome thank you david no, i appreciate it. thanks for your um opportunity to have a chat with you and uh yeah really appreciate your um yeah your great feedback it's really heartwarming okay that's cool thanks john i right.